Cinematic Sorcerer, along with... Hey, it's License Hench here, everybody. Hey, how you guys doing? Wasabi! You know what? Uh-uh, no, 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 no. You know, today I am, I am tired. I am tired. That's what I am. I'm, I am beyond tired, but I want to welcome everybody to Bust a Recap with, you know, exhausted people. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> and I'm going to say that, ah, oh, ouch, that was painful. Um, but I am Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and I am here today with my good friend, my good friend and compatriot. Um, yeah. Hey, license head. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Yeah, that's right. There we go. Again, I did the new headers and all that stuff. But yeah, yeah. Hey, so, you know, how you guys doing out there? Welcome to Buster Recap, the show where we just sit down and we talk about the stuff that we've been watching on our off time. Like I have off time. All right. I'm just double checking. To, oh, man, I dropped I dropped the mouse. Dropped the mouse. Oh, my God. Like, give me a show. I don't know. Give me a show. But, yep, letting you guys know, one, I'm apologizing for us not being here last week. Cool, the sound is coming in. Everything is going. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I've stopped doing the sound checks during the whole live thing. So, but yeah, we are here. We are here. But soon you will know. Actually, no, you will be here. Hopefully you guys are here. Um, you're here. I'm here. Yeah, I'm you're here. here. Yeah, you're here. I'm here. You know, and again, welcome to Buster Recap. This is the show where every week or as close to every week as we can get, we do everything we can to tell you guys about all the wacky stuff that we've been watching, um, which generally comes down to one or two shows, as in <laughs> two shows because there's two of us, and all that jazz. So we are covering Cloak and Dagger season one and Daredevil season three. And, um, you know, but first, before we get to everything, how are you, man? It's been like two weeks. Yeah, I'm doing a lot better. Still got a lingering bit of that cough that I can't seem to shake, but. Uh, and you're coming into the studio and giving yeah. it to me, huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> what? You've, you've got the power of nicotine protecting you. <laughs> I'm only not commenting on that because it's true. true. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. But uh, I, think I'm, I think I'm over the worst of it. I still have a little bit of a cough and a little bit of low energy, but other than that, I'm doing good. So, uh, but uh, how you been? Oh, man. Uh, I have been working, working, working. Um, a weird realization came to me. Uh, a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago. And I was looking at all the people that come in and help me do these casts. Ah, and all the other people I have on these shows. Ah, and then I realized something. What did you realize? I realized. You know what I realized? What did you realize? I realized that spring is coming. That is right. Winter is leaving. And that means I'm going to lose a whole bunch of people real soon. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny because... Uh, We've had a cold snap here in California. And by cold snap, we mean it wasn't 70 degrees outside for like a week. And I comment was, because this weekend it was kind of warm out. And I said to my friends, I'm like, I'm so glad that the, that the cold weather's done and it's warm again. And then I laughed because I'm like, yeah, everywhere else is having ice storms and, you know, snow seven feet thick. And I think, oh, it's so awful because it was overcast for four days in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least I'm aware that's the way it sounds. But uh yeah. Sorry, rest of the country is actually really nice outside right now. <laughs> yeah. Now there are probably a couple of people getting the announcement that we're going out because Instagram was being a little weird. It was being a little weird. I'm like sitting up going, All right, I'm putting out the announcement, I'm doing the thing. Here we are, we're doing the thing, doing the thing all the way across the board. Hey Deckers, what's ah. going on? It's so Ah that was weird. Ah. Yeah. And, uh, oh, God, no wonder. This thing is up way too loud. Uh, yeah, and um, you know what it said to me? What did it, it say to you? It said, um, yeah, no, we'll get around to sharing it soon as you pretty quick. It's, uh, well, it, it ain't working right now, but we're going to try again in a little bit. We're going to try again in a little bit. I'm mm. like, what do you mean it ain't working right now? What, the, what are you doing, Instagram? You know, and so I had to get out there and put a... Um, put an actual announcement out there like I had to type and I'm just I haven't done that in so long that it's just <laughs> weird 
Well, well you, you know, it's well, the 21st century, you know, so. Well, uh, how's MP City looking? Have, hmm? have people gotten the, gotten the word that we're on yet? Well, of course, MP City is always there, but we're going to get to them in just okay. a minute. What, y'all think, y'all think I forgot about you, but I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> you guys are going to get your moment. But um, just finishing up a couple of administrative things here, because as I said, um, <clears throat> yeah, Instagram was being a little weird. And then it just left me the announcement. Hey, guess what? We just posted your thing. I'm like, dude, we started like four minutes ago, <laughs> you know. So, again, all the technology plus the magic plus all of the other stuff that is, how can I put it, head aching. Also, did I mention that I am hyper exhausted? <laughs> Might have mentioned that, yeah. Yeah, I am. I am duh, so tired. Um, the day job mm -hmm. sucked me in for like 10 working days straight which is cool because it allowed me to upgrade some more equipment mm -hmm. you know um you guys can't see it where you are but um you guys are going to see some stuff this yeah. sunday you know because um i had to get some i had to get some better microphones and um a portable um what's the term i'm looking for a uh, soundboard Oh, nice. And some more cables yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm sitting up and I'm just like, all right, I got all this stuff. But man, and again, I went out and I looked at my bike and I'm like, all right, Nikki, let's 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 go to work. Let's do it. Let's let's. Hey, why is there a stripe of gray in the middle of your back tire? Oh, Ooh, crap. I got to yeah. get my uh, I, I, I got to yep. I got to get the tire changed. Yep. Yeah, I got to get the tire changed. So I'm getting the tire changed. And um, for those of you guys that, that ride, y'all feel me. Because, you know, this is life or death, yo. But what also hurts is that a motorcycle mechanic costs eight to $5 an hour. Ouch. Yeah. yeah. So I found a place that will change the tire for like 60 but I have to buy the tire for like 120 Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know what? I got an extra set of brakes here too, so what about y'all throwing those in? <laughs> you know, while you got the tire off. <laughs> yeah. You know, while it's down, well, tell you what, you do that, and then take a coffee break and let me switch out the brakes because I do it myself, but I don't have the tools. Yeah. You know, I, I don't have the tools and really the know-how to make sure that my transmission doesn't really mess up because mm. I have a drive shaft bike. So if mm. I had a chain, it'd be it'd be just like doing something on a bicycle. But no, yeah. I got this drive shaft, and it's like okay, you know, whatever. But yeah, so now that I've set up NP City for all those jokes about drive shafts, chains, and putting on the brakes, let's see how those guys are doing. <laughs> how are you guys doing over there at NP City? <clears throat> you see, hey, what? There's method to my madness. Yep, 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 yep. We got some of the people Something in. Something about poisonous lizards. Uh, oh yeah, long story, long okay. long story. But yeah, so. That's uh, one of the things, but you know, um, been getting back to been getting back to broadcasting because mm -hmm. we ended up taking a week off so that I can work, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now we're back. So for those of y'all wondering, I'm okay. We're okay here. I just haven't mastered being in four places at once. Last time I tried, there was just a great big mess and a lot of pandas. Um, but yeah, so you know, again, <laughs> thank you guys and NP City for being here. Yeah, woo, NP City, blah, 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 blah. thank you guys. And um, again, thank you, my henchmen, for mm -hmm. finding the time to yeah. come back out. <laughs> As always, you say, because you are my number one a guy. <laughs> you know, actually, no, you're like my number four, but yeah, never mind, never mind, never mind. So. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're, we're getting back to it. Um, I've been checking out a couple of other shows to mm -hmm. see what we're doing, but, um, I need to ask people something out there. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Cause, um, I recently got hit with a bill for the company and I'm like, okay, well it's a bill. I got to pay the bill or do I? And that bill is for SoundCloud. You see, I love doing this. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of the people that I do this for are broke. They just broke, 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 broke. And I get it. I don't want people stealing money out of their mom's purse, purses and, you know, giving us money and all that stuff. Because that's as beneficial as that would be. That goes against my principles. Um, but I've been giving away the audio for mm -hmm. all of our shows for the people that don't really want to see our faces or can't afford to go on our Patreon and mm -hmm. all that stuff. But now the bills do. 
and I'm like, do I pay for another year? Because I don't know if it's actually gotten us many more followers. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure if it's worth the investment. I'm not sure if I should leave SoundCloud and go and try and get into iTunes or Stitcher or go through that process. I don't know how long it's going to take. Mm. I'm new. So, you know, so I want to know what you guys think as far as that goes. Um, but if that's what I think and that's what I want to do, you might be asking a question. And you know what that question should be? What? If that's what you want, how do we let you know that's what we want? Well, I am glad that you asked because <laughs> you can let us know by going straight to... Oh, wait, what is... Oh, I know what's happening there. Yeah, you guys can let us know by going straight to backinthedeck at gmail.com. I got a little... There we go. Yeah. That's the next upgrade is new internal monitor speakers. But, hang on. Ooh. That's better. Oh, getting better. There we go. There we go. Now we're getting better. And this is why we're gone for so long when I have to actually get out and work and upgrade equipment. But you can give us a call over at backinthedeck.g or ooh, at backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. You can also leave a comment or something over on the YouTubes and all that jazz. Now, if you follow us on Twitter, I'll put up a poll. And how do you find us on Twitter? That is at back in the deck. Now, when I say put up a poll, I don't mean climb one. I'm saying a poll as in what is your opinion? And of course, you can always hit us up on Deckers on the book. We're there all the time, especially if you want to see some of the stuff that the henchman has been working on in his off time when I don't have him um, building things and fixing stuff for us. And of course, follow us on Instagram because it doesn't always mess up. And you can find us on Instagram at back in the deck. Now, if you guys really like what we do and you do want to support us and you don't really care about the, um, you know, if you guys really don't care about the SoundCloud thing, well, why wouldn't you care about the SoundCloud thing? Because you were already patrons over at Patreon. That's right. We got the Patreon thing going. We've got five backers right now. Uh, but in all honesty, we need about 200 at various levels to keep the lights on in here. And once that happens, what do you get? Well, we've got perks. We have things that I send out. We can help you guys out with your hobbies and all that jazz. And our tiers start at a dollar. One dollar. You know, they start at one dollar a month and you can have access to everything there and really help us out. But they go all the way up to a hundred dollars. And don't ask what we do for a hundred dollars a month. Let's just say I need to stretch a lot more. But you can also, um, if you feel like contributing directly, then that's fine. I would I would kind of appreciate that too. And you can find our GoFundMe at GoFundMe.com um, slash B-I-D dash dash P. Um, and of course, you can do all that stuff and it helps out a whole lot right there. You know, we're doing what we can. You know, when we put up the back in the deck site in the first place, um, I was just stressing. Do I make it a subscription site? Do I make it an ad based site? Blah, 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 blah. <coughs> See, you did this to me. Um, <laughs> um, you know, so I planned on making it a subscribe only site, but then I'm like, well, what if, you know, if I do a Patreon? Mm hmm. Then how can I do stuff that's good for Patreon that the subscribers don't feel bad about? And what can I give the Patreon people that the subscribers don't have access to? And it's just a whole bunch of weird stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of the stuff I've been beating my head against over the weekend. So it's probably going to be ads based, as based on backinthedeck.com. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. Again, trying to do this full time. So if you like our stuff without commercials and all that stuff... Um, just again, dollar a month, Patreon, there you go. You lose more than that in your car cushions while you're driving. You know you do. You know, God knows I do. <laughs> and yeah, 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 I hear what you guys are saying. If you didn't lose so much change, maybe you wouldn't have to beg so hard. I hear you. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, you know, full disclosure, a little punch drunk, really tired. I ended up having to work this morning. 
But we are here to talk about the cloaking and the daggering, yep. aren't we? Yep, yep. So, talk to us here. Cloak and Dagger, the Marvel television show. All right. Uh, I'm up on episode six. Uh, I believe it's Hall of Mirrors. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, it, yeah, Mirror Maze. I think it's Hall of Mirrors. But uh, uh, this one, they start <coughs> bringing in a lot more of the psych. They, they felt like, again, now we're no longer just doing that that cut back and forth between the two characters. Mm-hmm. They're bringing in a lot more of the f- side characters. It starts off with a really good exposition scene between... Uh, uh, the, uh, what's her name? Not Elvira. I always want to call her Elvira. <laughs> it's uh, L. The girlfriend, yeah. Yeah, the girlfriend. <clears throat> and her so, aunt. And her aunt mm-hmm. doing a tarot reading. The aunt's explaining to her that I, I've got a tingle. Something bad <laughs> is coming. And I know it has to do with with your boyfriend. He goes, well, he's not my boyfriend. And she's like, I'm and worried about like, him. Don't mess with me, girl. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and the good thing is, is that I, I love that they don't do the trope where she like is... No, she denies everything. She's like, no, you're my aunt. You know what you're talking about. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. And their conversation is a great tool to get exposition to us, the audience, to bring us up to speed on all the supernatural backstory that we don't have if we haven't read the comic books. Mm-hmm. I.e., oh, she starts bringing up, they, they start talking about how there's a cycle in New Orleans. There's always a cycle of destruction and recreation, of death and rebirth. And then she talks about the divine pairs, and she even points out the divine pairs, and the girlfriend names them. Well, finish up the synopsis, and then we'll get uh, and okay. we'll get back to that. All right. So, uh, so I want to do a quick summary. Let me. I'm running everything back for. Okay. All right. So, start off with that scene with the. Uh, 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 they lay out the what the the danger to come and how things are do not look good for anybody. And then we cut to uh, Tandy uh, sneaking into the young uh, uh, environmental sci- sci- uh, scientist's good graces by pretending to be her new intern. <laughs> and and she's like, great, she's got a new job, she's got waiters, you know, she's going to go and do the thing. And uh, uh, <clears throat> so she shows up the next day and she's talking, and she uh, she talks to Ty a little bit, and Ty's thing's not going so good because he's trying to get into his brother's best friend's criminal empire, and that's not going good for him. She's like, "Well, maybe you should make yourself useful to him." Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, we cut back. You know, Tanny goes back to her first day on the job in a haunted amusement park. <laughs> now I'm watching this and go, "Wait, she's a scientist." for a megacorp who lives in a haunted amusement park. This is not good. <laughs> and then they mess with us because she bakes cookies. Now, so we talk about the haunted amusement yeah, park. She haunted. walks in like, um, um, am I in the right place? Aren't you? Yeah, yeah she's in an abandoned amusement spooky. park in the bayou. Spooky. Oh, look at the spooky. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, oh, that can't be too good. But it turns out She's a great person. She's wonderful. She genuinely believes in her stuff. She and Tandy have multiple bonding moments. She makes cookies. She makes cookies. And uh, unfortunately, Tandy likes her too much and turns out to be real crappy at a con (laughs) and uh, gets called out on being a liar. (laughs) And uh, uh, but by coming clean, she actually winds up uh, finally getting what she wants, which is to have an opportunity to talk to uh, the dad, which was her dad's best friend at work. Find out what happened there. Now let that be a lesson. <clears throat> Some t- <clears throat> Most of the time, just ask. Yeah. I mean, be yeah, honest is like, yeah. yeah. She was so ingrained that everyone at the corporation were like evil douchebags that she never considered that she might actually be on the level and like help her. Yeah, it's only the executive board that yeah, are evil. Exactly. <laughs> they even go to, we'll, we'll revisit that because they actually go out of their way to hammer that point home. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Ty is trying to figure out how to uh, h- how he can better uh, break into the the drug kingpin world, and he is terrible at it. Did we not? <clears throat> did he not hear what we just said? <laughs> just be honest. <laughs> He's terrible. He gets caught tailing the dude. You know, get a gun shunned in his face. It's not going his way. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Latte Chick, I'm sorry, <laughs> latte, latte Cop, cop Latte Cop, Latte yeah. Cop, Latte Cop is uh, making waves and she's warned by her uh, boyfriend cop to drop it because the guy she's messing around with 
is not a good guy. Everyone knows he's dirty, <laughs> but everyone looks the other way because he's the devil they know. And she's like, I know what I'm doing. He's like, I hope you do. And fortunately, he's right because Dirty Cop has had enough of her shenanigans and is planning on taking her out. And fortunately, and that's where, uh, so he decides to go on a ride along. <laughs> uh, she busts one of the runners. Ty takes advantage of the fact to steal the runner's uh, uh, contraband and, and run off with it. So uh, now he has an in. And then, of course, uh, uh, an evil cop roughs up the guy all while yelling at him, I'm doing this for your own good. Tell your boss we need to meet. You know, because he's got putting on a show for a latte cop. And uh, uh, Ty has a Ty pitches his deal to the drug kingpin. The drug kingpin's like, "You want to be on this life?" He's like, "Yeah, okay, <laughs> you're in." And then he has a big heart to heart with with his uh, cop, who's like, okay. "I mean, to his buddy, who's like." You're you're disrespecting my brother's memory. This is horrible. You're a better person than this. And he like uh, he looks like it for a second. He almost wants to like school Ty, and then he realizes Ty's kind of right. Mm -hmm. but then they get interrupted by uh, dirty cop, who's like uh, Ty hides. Ty tells Ty leave. Ty doesn't leave. I'm not Ty. Uh, he hides. And uh, so he gets over here. Over here, dirty cop. Telling drug kingpin, time to kill Latte Cop. And Latte Cop, I don't want to do this. He's like, you got to do this. <laughs> and then fine. And uh, Ty tries to call Latte, Latte Cop and Warner. She makes the constant decision to not take the call. And, of course, runs in. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, um, uh, while this is about to set up, they go back to Tandy. Tandy finally meets the dad. And we find out why... Uh, environmental science girl has been so weird about her dad. Her dad is in a persistent vegetative state. Mm -hmm. He's completely checked out. He mumbles, but he sees nothing. And Tandy, in a very poignant moment, because this is kind of like her closest connection to her father, mm -hmm. touches him, goes into his mind. His mind is behind a locked steel door. <laughs> and when she tries to open it, darkness blocks her. In other words... This man has no hope, only fear. Mm -hmm. She can't go there, but she knows someone who does. <laughs> Speaking of which, that's someone who does. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he 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 watches yet again. <laughs> Dirty cop. People run in. Guns are drawn. Things happen. Dirty cop. Surprise, surprise. Kills the drug kingpin, mm -hmm. which causes Ty to make a sound of just horror because it's happening again. again in front of his face in front of his face <laughs> and he just makes this gasp to someone who was important to him when he was yeah. eight <laughs> which kind of screws the pooch on uh, uh, uh it keeps latte cop from taking the next bullet but as he's running from dirty cop yet again he attempts to teleport a couple of times doesn't quite make it just sort of doing that mage uh blink thing where he can only leap like five feet ahead just enough to avoid being shot in the back like three times <laughs> and then finally teleports to tandy who's in the church who takes one look at him as he's just standing there completely broken just sobbing and falling apart she actually having some empathy for someone else runs forward tries to help him and can't even touch him <clears throat> because their powers do not mix and he collapses and and just complete utter ruin and that's the end yep <clears throat> oh poor ty i want to help you you're my friend you're my friend i want to help you and, oh crap i can't even give you a hug <laughs> you yep. know and yeah so that is uh that is uh our episode which uh i really 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 wanted to just go to the next one <laughs> really grab me you know and and i think a couple things like things i liked about this episode Moving back again, the exposition between the a girlfriend and her uh -huh. aunt. It was a great way of giving us the backstory of explaining it and in a and in a form without it being too narrative or um or, or breaking the 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 flow of the story. We know, especially when uh, she's laying out the cards, which I found a little confusing because 
I know a little bit about tarot cards, but she's doing a tarot reading with a standard play deck. Yes. Which I realize is very standard for that kind of thing down there. Mm-hmm. But um, but I don't know what the cards mean. But I'm but they're not good. So then she <laughs> plays out the cards and she says she says you know uh, it doesn't look good for your boyfriend because one of them it's going to be the same pattern playing out every single time as with every divine pairing one will live and one will die. And then later on I was thinking about that because I was actually think because thinking mm-hmm. about the show after the fact I'm like wait that doesn't necessarily mean that. It just means one is life and one is death. Mm-hmm. And if you think about their powers, that oh. makes sense. <laughs> and then we go on with, uh, and then also the whole oh, thing. Her name is Evita, by the way. Evita. <coughs> Evita. I always want to call her Don't Vira. cry for me, Argentina. Yeah, Evita. Um, <coughs> but, uh, and then the environmental scientist was a real fun character. Because like I said, when they first introduced her, in an abandoned amusement park, you're like, "Oh god, this isn't going to go good." And then she's being kind of key. She's been, <coughs> yeah. she's she's being kind of kind of weirded out by Tandy because Tandy's like asking leading questions and trying to be sly. But the problem is, is that the person she's scamming is not a narcissistic, uh, <laughs> not not a narcissistic douchebag. Only interested in her uh, in in her appearance. So she's actually paying attention to what she's saying, and. Um, there's a real fun scene where she act. It's great because she actually lays out the whole evil plan. Like, oh, you signed the NDA, right? She goes, yeah, I signed the NDA and the NDA about signing the NDA, which you've ever signed an NDA. Yeah, you, you have an NDA that says you can't talk about the NDA. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, so she says, oh, yeah, we found something under New Orleans. What was that? Uh, I don't know. It sounded like know. a foghorn in the distance. I don't know. They found something under New Orleans. Uh, which is, is, is it oil? Oh, no. It's more powerful than oil. It burns ten times longer and ten times hotter, i.e. black blood of the earth. <laughs> Wait, you mean oil? No, I mean black blood, blood of the earth. Yeah. You know? And um, which also, uh, and they said that it, it builds up. The problem is, is that if they attempt to tap it, the power will build up and then release in this cycle. This episode, they, they talk about cycles and power building up and releasing multiple times so they're really hammering home the theme of 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 all this and she explains that that's what happened when the the drilling rig blew up like they tapped into it and the system couldn't handle the uh amount of energy that that was coming out of the out of the ground and overloaded and her job is to design a heat shield to prevent that from happening so she's positioned relief valves all throughout New Orleans <laughs> to let the excess uh, pressure and heat go so they can tap this new fuel source under the city. And uh, in the back of my mind, I'm flashing mm-hmm. back to that first season of Preacher where they had the giant methane release valves mm-hmm. and eventually they wind up blowing the whole city. So, oh, wow, you have these release valves. So the oil company tried to drill once. They blew up the oil rig. Now they're going to try to drill and they're going to redistribute the energy through the entire city. Hmm. Yeah. You know this is a comic book show, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. just. I, I figure I have to point that out. Yeah. But to really hammer home that the reason why this is going bad is because the company is ran by a bunch of of self serving idiots. <laughs> is they're gonna go because they're wading through the swamp. She's talking about <clears throat> nature. She's showing her all the plants. This woman is dedicated to doing right. Mm-hmm. And then there's a guy in a suit standing in the heat, swatting mosquitoes, looking miserable, going, you need to fix your heat shield. It's broken. And they're looking over and the heat shield, which is just pipes or whatever, mm-hmm. nothing's working right. And they and, and the scientist is trying to figure out why it's not working. It all should. The math is right. Tandy looks at the map, does some calculations and goes, oh, shouldn't this be over there? And she's like, oh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> Tandy, high school dropout, looks at the looks, looks at, at the, the plans, blueprints. Yeah, looks look, at the blueprints yeah. and goes, "Oh, I see what's wrong. They're they're digging in the wrong place." <laughs> and the scientist looks at it and, and and like just starts ripping into the the uh, the corporate douche. And he's like, "Well, what's the big deal? It's only ten feet off." She goes, "He, he goes, this is shale." It won't work. This material is too dense. And he goes, he goes. But if we put it where you wanted to put it, we would have had to bring out a crane, and that would have cost money. And she's like, you know what? I'll fix it. I'll be out here tomorrow with a crane and put it in the right spot. You go back to corporate and stay in the air conditioning. Yeah. And and that that really is like 
I thought that was a little heavy handed, not ham fisted, just, just heavy handed because it was very much like you screwed up my design. Now you're telling me to fix it. And it's like you broke this. Yeah. Well, we were trying to save money. And how'd that work out? You know, now the funny thing, well, the funny thing, the the the, po the poignant thing about that is that is the exact conversation Tandy's dad was having over the phone when things blew up eight years earlier. You caught that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tandy did not respond well to this entire scene. She smiles, she nods, as she walks away, she slashes the guy's tires. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, and the story arc with Ty, that yeah. was gut-wrenching oh. the whole time because coming to the terms with the fact that like he watched his brother get killed by the cops and all that jazz and his brother's <laughs> best friend yeah. is now working with the dude and it's like what do you do as a little brother where you're going okay my big brother is dead my big brother's brother from another mother is now working with the dude that killed him and you want to go up going dude WTF over, you know? Yeah. But, but he actually the, has that moment, you know? And yeah. how, how exactly do you do that? And that's one of the reasons that I could see him stressing. Mm -hmm. But then when everything went south, yeah. now I'm not going to lie. The scene where he's running from, from nasty cop. Oh, and he's, he's, he's yeah. bamfing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I got to say, I got kind of, and, I, and I'm just saying kind of, just kind of upset at the director on that one and this is purely purely from a um purely from a technical point of mm -hmm. view because um um he was running in a really really wacky manner you know i mean it was almost as wacky as the first time he was running from the cop but like he's um oh no he's dead well there goes my case but yeah he's running and He's getting a little better at the bamps, but the jumping that he does, it's like, okay, I'm running, I'm running. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know, but well, yeah. I, I interpreted that, he was, he was, I, I kind of interpret that as kind of the uh, uh, same thing for a, a Greatest American Hero. He's like, I don't oh, yeah. know how my power works. Well, what do you do? Well, the. The other with the other superheroes, they like jump in the air when they do this stuff. So he's like trying to jump and he's jumping. And the thing is, he's, I, I get yeah. that. I mean, you know, learning curve always looks silly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just and, saying. And I also, had to point he's out landing that. goofy because the spot he's landing is not where he expected it to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. Although I honestly thought he was going to when he appeared first appears with Tandy, I thought he was going to have like a bullet wound in him or something. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I honestly that's... thought that was going to happen. But uh, why well, thinking, well, my thought was, oh, well, I have a bull wound, but that's when she can she discover maybe she can heal a kind of a thing. But no, no, they're just not going to let him off that easy. Yeah. Don't don't you get it? Everything for him in this show is hard. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, he, he's one of those. Marvel has this interesting thing. They, they have this interesting way of getting you connected to a character. Mm -hmm. And then making them suffer. <laughs> they suffer hard. Cloak and Dagger, they suffer. Spider-Man suffers. suffers. Um, Captain America, like mm -hmm. the symbol of what we all ought to be, suffers. Um, Daredevil suffers. It's just like, can't my heroes have a good day? No. We're Marvel. And we have to find some way to show you that you don't want to be a superhero because it sucks here. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, I, I think that's one of the reasons that I'm not really into their street level stuff because mm. their cosmic stuff, they don't suffer as much. And their cosmic stuff is like adventure in the cosmos. But yeah, so it's or, one of those things. Or if there is, if there is some difficulty, it's worth it as <laughs> power cosmic. Yeah. Ex or, well, not just power cosmic. I mean, you know, you're dealing with creation and all yeah. that jazz, but, um, but yeah, there's a lot of, um, there is a lot of suffering on the street level side of Marvel mm. comics. It's like, yeah, you know what? This world really sucks. That's why I'd prefer to live in the DC world, except in space, because Marvel space is awesome. Um, but DC has better magic. So it's one of those things. I'm, I'm writing a video essay on that. Hmm. Um, okay. But yeah, so what would you give this episode? Uh... Do, 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 do. Yeah, I was trying. I'm doing between three of a kind, do, do, four of a kind. Do, do, do. I'm thinking uh, 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 three of a kind. It wasn't quite a. It was. 
it definitely got me in. I want more, mm-hmm. but that's the problem. I want more. I don't really feel like the episode. The episode just raised a lot of a lot of stuff. <laughs> it didn't answer anything yet. Ah. So I feel like this is a two-parter. And I want the second part, but I want it. <laughs> so, very good show, engaged, got me hooked. I really want to see the second half because I'm also kind of excited because I think there that Tandy has learned that Todd cuz at this point, it's like, well, I'll do my thing, you do your thing. And we just kind of, we're kind of friends who talk every now and then. And now they're going to learn that, no, mm-hmm. I need you to help me with my thing, and you need me to help you with your thing. We have to be a team. Uh-huh. And that's, I think, what's coming. And I'm really <coughs> anticipating that. Yeah. Um, now, I'm actually in a very similar mood <clears throat> with you on this one. Um, I definitely gave this one a full house. It wasn't a four of a kind, but I gave it a full house, and I'll tell you why. Um the decisions that are made in this show aren't always the best decisions, mm-hmm. but they're understandable decisions. Yeah, Stickman you know? calls it human decisions. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. human. They're, they're very human. Their mistakes are very human. I love that they said, ha-ha, now we're going to see the Roxxon scientist, and she is so adorable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she makes cookies with cardamom. She lives, she lives, yeah, in an abandoned amusement park, but she also lives in cargo container house because she's an environmentalist, so she's trying to do stuff for the environment. And it's like, look, this is what lawful good looks like. And they don't make her stupid. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's one of those tendies like, yes, well, I'm going to add the, uh, ask this leading question. Oh, yes, you know that my, um, yes, I'm saying that I'm an intern and I'm fully cognizant of reading the blueprints to a project that I've never heard of once before. And she's like, don't BS me. I know who your dad was. And it was like, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. We used to play together as kids. Do you not remember that? You know, I used to babysit you. Don't don't BS me. And, um, and yeah, um, so when that came out, and it also showed that you have the corporate thing, but it's really easy to say it's a corporation, it's evil because evil. But we, we found out about the CEO. We found out about the dude that's yeah. like, oh, well, people died, give me money. People died, give me money. People died, give me money. But even they showed him going, you don't know how to change your own tire? Oh, girl, let me change your tire and all that stuff. So it's like, they could be considered good people if they weren't evil. Yeah. (laughs) You know? And in this one, we saw the evil of middle management, Mm -hmm. you know, because the CEO that was talking to the environmental scientist was her partner. Like, that, that, they're direct partners. So Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you need to fix this because you're the one that knows how it works. And she's like, you built it wrong, you idiot. (laughs) You know? And he did the normal corporate thing of, well... Had to cut costs. Had to show the investors profit. And she was like, what profit are you going to show the investors if I have to keep coming out here and paying more money to fix your mistakes? Do it right. Yeah. You know? And um, But the part that really clinched me was the narration. Because so often, um, you've heard the trope of the magic Negro, right? Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. And I don't mean just because you're on a show with one. But... <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like you get that that magical black person that knows everything that's going on and they exist solely to help the main character who's generally white. And they didn't do that with Ty. And then they introduced two people that happen to be black that actually do magic. Yes. <laughs> and they don't do magic like I'm waving my hand and things are fixed. They're doing the magic of we know stuff and you ain't ready to hear it yet. Yeah. Now let me let me just work this whole thing out here. Let me do that whole thing. Now, um, quick magic lesson. You guys are going to like this. Um, The regular deck of playing cards is based on the tarot deck. Yeah. So you have your four suits of cards, and they're based on the four suits of the tarot. It's just Mm -hmm. they took out the major arcana. Yeah. Swords are not good. That's why spades are bad. It's sword, spade, club, wand, um, heart. Oh, my God. This this is why I don't like being tired. (laughs) Um, Um... the hearts are the coins and the fourth one, you know, the mm-hmm. are, sorry, the diamonds are the coins and, and the hearts are the pentacles. And, um, you know, oh, I'm going to get crap in the comment section for all that. Um, but it is possible to do a tarot reading with a yeah, which is playing really cards. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they are, she's essentially a kitchen voodoo priestess in New Orleans. 
Yeah. So, I mean, well, they well they, yeah. they emphasize that in the scene because she she breaks a brick and uses the brick dust to mm -hmm. seal the room. She purifies the room with uh, uh, rum. Yeah. She's doing, and then they purify themselves with wa with uh, blessed water. Mm hmm. And uh, you yeah, know, it's all headology. You use what you got. You know. <laughs> and actually, that's something I kept saying. You use what you got. You use they, that was something uh -huh. they kept saying. This episode was you use what you got. Uh, power builds and releases, and the cycle happens again and again. Yeah. And I say, multiple people say this multiple times. Exactly. And so it sticks with the theme, and some people would say, it hits you over the head with it. Not everybody is taking creative writing, and not everyone is an occultist. Yeah. So if, if you get that, good for you. But not everybody does. Um, but I like the way that you're having the essentially the wizard and her apprentice mm -hmm. going over everything, and the apprentice is going, so what's my part in this? Yeah. And the wizard's going, wait. And then the apprentice doesn't do what normal apprentice do, which, which is, is uh, but I want to know. It's wait. All right. <laughs> I'm waiting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm good. She's not following the trope of arguing or, no, or, or nope. rebelling. She's like, no, nope. like, no, okay, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, she's competent as all get out. So I really like that character mm -hmm. because of all these yeah. reasons. Um, so, yeah, I had to give it, um, I really had to give this episode um, a three of a kind. Partly because it's incomplete, mm -hmm. um, and the other reason is um, the lessons are pushed, but there's just so much damn pain. Yeah, It's like, I warned you about this show. Mm -hmm. I warned you that this show is amazing, but it's hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard to watch, and as good as this episode was, it was hard. It left a feeling, and it, it again, it meant to do this, um, and it did it well, which was it left the viewer with a feeling of uneasiness, of hopelessness, of darkness, and I walked away with from it like, I'm glad they showed the exposition between the two magic users, primarily because if that wasn't there, why bother? This show would just be a downer. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, that, that's where I sit with that. But yeah, because that, that exposition does tell us that this is going somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it, it like it, the energy is it, like it's building and then there will be a release. There is a cycle. Yeah. And yeah. You know, so I honestly thought that it was clever that the show was like, we know, we know, just, just we know, we know, just, just stay, just stick around. Yeah. Trust me. Okay, the dragons are gonna get here, and they're gonna be awesome. Just, just, just. Y you sat through Game of Thrones. You know, give, give us that kind of a shot. Um, but let's talk about the daredevil, the devil of Hell's Kitchen, man. That, that, that dude. So this one was a really important episode. Now this one's called the Devil You Know. Okay. Okay. And in a nutshell, Foggy and Karen have that conversation where Karen admits to killing Owen from the first season. And Foggy's like, it was self-defense. It was this. You're still a good person. You're still a good person. I'll get to that later after the synopsis. Um, and Dexter pretty much gets in Fisk's face on this one. You know, and he's like, dude, you've been pulling strings this whole time. And um, Kingpin is kind of like, yeah, yeah, I have been. And I got my eye on you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I kind of got my eye on you on this one because I like you. I see potential in you. And Dexter's like, what? No, whoa, no, 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 no. That, that, no, you don't get it. I'm trying to be a decent person. And he's like, dude, you're not. And you don't have to be. Let me tell you, when I was a kid, I, I had a very abusive father. You want to know how I got these scars? Oh, sorry, sorry, wrong. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> when I was a kid... <laughs> You know, my father was very abusive, and I beat his head in with a claw hammer. <laughs> I do good things for the city. <laughs> you don't have to be a good person to do good things. And the way that it's written, you kind of go, oh, yeah, I kind of get that. Um, in the meantime, during all of this confrontation, um, Agent Nadim gets promoted because of all of the busts and reduction in criminal activity that the Kingpin deal has actually done. So the city is getting better, and mm -hmm. Nadim is kind of like, yeah, you know, uh, thanks, but I, I'm just there. And um, 
And he doesn't know that this is just putting him deeper and deeper and deeper into the Kingpin's pocket, yeah. which is played off very well. Um, but he gets together with Foggy. And again, <clears throat> um, his financial troubles is back up, but he doesn't know how he's being played. And Foggy is like, dude, don't trust this dude. <laughs> you know, don't do it. I've seen what he's capable of. He's tried to kill me. He's tried to kill my friends. I... I can't tell you exactly why I know how bad he is, but trust me, he's bad. And Azim is like, um, and then comes the conversation between Matt and Karen. Because Matt is like, uh, hey, I know you think I was dead, um, but can we talk about this? Because I need some information from you. And of course, you know, that goes a little better than expected, but not not um not entirely so there's a lot of stuff that goes down um dex and uh sorry not um yeah dexter uh, agent dexter tries talking to the girl he had a crush on when he was in the suicide hotline mm -hmm. and they go out for lunch and it's kind of a catch-up lunch but he's looking at it like a date and then he starts getting a little bit creepy and kind of starts uh, saying, yeah, no, I know all this stuff because I've been stalking you, but I'm a government agent, so we kind of stalk everybody. And she's like, yeah, that's nice. Go away from me, crazy. I never want to see you again. And he thinks about killing himself. Um, but in comes Kingpin. <laughs> I know you're heartbroken, but sometimes you just have to scream. <laughs> and it kind of ends with um, um, Kingpin holding on to Dex as a surrogate son. Oh, and wow. Yeah. Yeah. So in this one, this is where the show actually starts speeding up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I'm looking at this and one of the things that this show did, and this is one of the reasons that season three is considered the best of all three seasons of Daredevil, is that a lot of shows talk about masterminds. Mm -hmm. They talk about criminal masterminds. But when it really comes down to it, um, previous, um, when the mastermind puts his plan into motion, mm -hmm. the mastermind's plan always depends on script immunity, what happened off screen, and evil will triumph because good is dumb. <laughs> and this show has spent the past five episodes hinting at what Kingpin did off screen but showing how the effects are there. And it's not like, this happened because I did something completely unbelievable off screen. It's like, no, I paid off a dude. Yeah. I paid off a dude over here. Oh no, I know this information. And you're just seeing these layers and pieces upon pieces upon pieces. And he's finally at a point now where he's like, I've got the last piece. I didn't know how I was gonna get the last piece. Then this dude saved my life. I see his talent. Mm -hmm. I see he's crazy. I see he's broken. I can work with that. Yeah. I think you're my last piece. And it takes him a while to do this, but they show that. They mm -hmm. show the kingpin, uh, or they show Fisk reading Dex's um, psychological profile, reading his history, looking at his work history, putting together who this guy is. And you're going, okay, the human mind is terrifying. Mm -hmm. It really is terrifying. And so he was able to put all that stuff together and know exactly how to work him. <laughs> and then you just see poor Agent Dexter break. You mm -hmm. just see him break. And then you kind of look at everything and listen to the lawyer conversations with Fisk. And it's like, it's like that moment in training day. Mm hmm that whole, what are you talking about? You've been planning this all day. And he's like, boy, I've been planning this all week. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you go back to Punisher season one, mm -hmm. um, Kingpin lets the Punisher out of jail after he's running the place from being locked away in Daredevil season one. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> Frank Castle is like, so you're letting me out here so I kill every scrim criminal scumbag and all that stuff. But if you got this much power, why don't you leave? And he's like... Because, Mr. Castle, you want to leave this prison to fight a war. When I leave this prison, I intend to win a war. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a pretty cool line and all that stuff. And then this season, I'm like, oh, no, he meant it. Yeah. Oh, my God, he meant it. He, he was exactly where he <laughs> wanted to be 
to put uh, things in motion to get where <clears throat> yeah yeah so again um but again this episode now i've been giving most of them like three of a kind okay uh, two pair three of a kind because it's like okay you're setting up i see that you're setting up i see that you're setting up all right you're setting it up are we done with the setup i mean the scaffolding is there can we just get to the story and now it says not yet not yet can't get to the story yet not yet not yet now yeah and it's like oh up oh, oh this isn't written for children no it's not written for children that's why it's on netflix okay all right <laughs> I'll trust you. I'll, I'll trust you. So, yeah. Um, and again, stellar performances from mm. everybody on the show. Um, you know, specifically Agent Dexter. Because Agent Dexter just, they show him going through some crap. But Daredevil I, tries to do I a do, thing. I do have an important question. Hmm. Was there any hallway fight this episode? There was a fight scene this episode because it's an episode of Daredevil. Okay. It wasn't in a hallway. What? what? No, wasn't in the hallway this time. But <clears throat> I do have to say, like, the real conflict, though, really mm -hmm. came between Karen and Matt. Because, you know, um, he kind of shows up. He's back in the black outfit because building fell on him. So <laughs> where's the dare Daredevil costume? Yeah. There ain't one. Um, and, you know, we've got Charlie and Deborah doing the thing. And she's just like, you know, again, Deborah and Wall in this scene. For you guys out there that are young and haven't dated, here's the gig. When they look, <clears throat> when your girlfriend looks like that, when she talks, that look on her face, just leave. Just leave. You've messed up. <laughs> Don't say I'm sorry. Just leave. Because if you're going to apologize, you got to know exactly what you're apologizing for. <laughs> because that look right there. That's the don't BS me, don't apologize, don't, don't, you don't even know why I'm mad. And I've got you dead to rights on this one. <laughs> and she does. She really does. She has him and he's like, yeah, I, I know. I, I know you've got me dead to rights and all this other stuff. And she's like, yeah. And if you think you're talking your way out of this, you are so wrong. <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, so, and of course, um, I'm going to take a little bit of a risk here and give ourselves like you know a few seconds here but um just the working now again the season starts with kingpin in his prison jumpsuit and by this point with all of his machinations he's still on house arrest true but he is sporting you know he is so sporting that suit you know yeah <laughs> <clears throat> and he's like yeah Can i have a little style yeah, a little, a little style. Way. And again, yes, we're we're taught to hide beneath many fictions. <laughs> you know, and um so I mean that that really that really became a thing, you know, where um where he's like, "Oh no, by the way, my wardrobe will let you know how much you are being worked." You know, cuz you are. I'm working you again. I've been planning this all week. Look at my suit. <laughs> you know, here we are. And, uh, yeah, you know, he's like, you're fashioning yourself into something the world would tolerate. I'm working you like your name is Jesse and my name is Walter White. You know? <laughs> and poor Bullseye, you know, he's just sitting up there like... Yeah, he looks you're pretty right. broken. You're he right. looks pretty broken at that uh, point. Uh, you know? <laughs> and, yeah, so I mean, just, just the psychological stuff mm -hmm. that comes out of this episode is just... It, it's staggering, you know? It really is. It, it's staggering. It's painful. I'm making sure that my levels are good. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> oh, man. Yep, I think you're making me sick. You know. And, um, but yeah, so all in all, this, this particular episode, you know, again, he just works him. He's just working him psychologically. Um... And then comes the real psychological abuse, you know, and that's the part that shows that Kingpin is a bad guy. I've got the subtitles on um, because I don't want us to get flagged, you know, but, you know, Julie would have never understood you, the real you. She never would have understood and society won't either, but I will. It punishes people like you. Oh, there we go. 
and it's just over and over and over and over again. It's like, you know, they don't know you like I know you. They'll punish you. They'll look at you poorly. Believe me, it happened to me. But look at where I am now. I can help you. I can help you. Take your weapon. Strike me down. <laughs> to the dark side. And then your we journey to the dark side will be complete. You know? <laughs> and, yep. uh, you know. And this is a man who embraces his inner psychopath and encourages others to do the same. Yeah. And it, it, and it's just like, wow. Yeah. Just, again, just over the course of the whole show, um, it really starts to... Uh, again, it's, I'm going to work you. Mm-hmm. I'm working you hard, and with all the work that's going on there, you can just see the poor guy, <laughs> just the just the poor dude. Dex is just like, I don't know what to do with myself. I try to be good, but I think I was just made bad. And you get Kingpin going, you were, you were, Mr. Dexter. You were made bad. You were born bad. <laughs> but you can be useful to bad men, <laughs> you know. And, um, you know, uh, almost all that was missing from this was, and by the way, Julie is dead and Dexter going, no, but what I'm saying is that this episode did what Star Wars episode three failed to do. You know, it did in freaking 55 minutes what that entire movie failed to do in two and a half hours. So I definitely have to give it a three, a uh, three of a kind mm-hmm. on this one because, um, we still haven't quite gotten there yet. Yeah. We haven't quite gotten there. But you but know it's coming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this season is such a slow burn. It's a slow burn, and you're like, ah, 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 oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Can we just have a fight scene now? I'm tired. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and again. Do you know what's outside this room? Huh? A hallway. You should go into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If I had better special effects, I'd be like, I'll be right back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I feel better. I feel better. So, yeah. So, all in all, I, I was I was really digging mm. all that. Um, so, yeah. Um, I know you're not watching the show, but yeah. what are you thinking about, you know, what I'm telling you about it so far? I'm digging it. You know. Um, I'm, I'm like that they don't. I really like what they're doing with Fisk and showing that he's not a brute. And he's not just because a lot of times when you see the kingpin and other stuff, you know, the kingpin is this big guy. He's a criminal. What's his power? Well, he's super, super strong. And, you know, he wears he wears suits before he, like, beats people to death. But it also shows that, no, he's also brilliant. He's just and patient. Yeah, and patient. And it's just he has no. He does not have any filter as far as like he has he has no guilt. He has no guilt. Oh yeah. He has no he has no limit. He's like, no, I've at an early age I realized I was a monster and I decided to be the best monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he very oh you know what? He very much is. He's not like the like, joker of like, yeah. I'm just ahead of the curve. He's like, no, no, I'm evil. Yep. I'm evil, but I love my city, so I'm gonna save my city, and if and I'll probably end up do it in doing it in an evil way. But is that so bad? As long as the city's saved, you know. Yeah, and it's uh, you know, he he his his superpower is he understands people. Mm-hmm. He understands people, and the first person he understands is himself. Yeah. He just chooses, but he and he looks at people and he goes, "Oh, here's a person on a cusp." I could push him one way, and he would become the best FBI agent in the world. But that wouldn't help me. I could push him the other way and turn him into a psychotic monster who works for me. And that is where he goes, you know what? I'll have him work for me. But you're turning him into a psychotic monster. Nah, most people are terrible inside. I can see it. I like vegetarian yeah. pizza. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. If he only used his powers for good... I would rather he used his powers for me, you know, <laughs> and um, but yeah, so I mean, honestly, they're really starting to show that. And yeah. like, again, um, Vincent D'Onofrio is just owning the show. Yeah. He really is. I also like the, the fact that you pointed out that he went from being, you know, in prison garb to now he's in a suit. It's also a way of showing visually that he's he is 
stepping back into his position of power. You know, comfortably. It, yeah, comfortably. that's the thing. It's um, as the show goes on, you can see like he starts off. Oh, I have my position of power, but I can't show you that I know that. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not that he's stepping in the position of power. He's dropping the camouflage. Yes, yes. He's dropping that, the camouflage. That is exactly the whole yes. thing. So he's pretty much at the, yes, I'm on house arrest, in a penthouse that nobody else can afford. I have gourmet mm-hmm. food. You guys don't just watch me all day, but you protect me. And now I'm in my $10,000 suits, and I'm kind of going, what you going to do? <laughs> what you going to do? <laughs> You know, yeah, but but you're a criminal. You're right, and I'm being punished. I well, me, I, I was here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was here. I was I was under house arrest. I was I was in. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have, was in. I know. have I have the Federal Bureau of Investigation giving me the best alibi in the world. And look, it's all on film. Yeah. So you're saying I'm doing all this crime, and one, you got to prove it, and two, let's say I was doing all this crime. What you going to do? <laughs> I'm already in jail, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm rather impressed at that goes, but I'm going to need you to pardon me for half a minute. Okay. You know, half a minute. I got um, yeah, to um, talk to these guys for a minute. <laughs> okay, I wasn't prepared for this. I will guess I'll read you my speech I on. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, over the weekend, I finally managed to pick up a copy of uh, Ant Man and Wasp, and I haven't actually watched it yet because I decided that before watching Ant Man and Wasp, I would watch Ant Man. So I popped an Ant Man, and that yeah, you know, that was a, a fun romp. I described it to my friend as. Uh, Marvel's uh, lighthearted kind of joke film before Guardians of the Galaxy became their lighthearted kind of joke thing. And, um, but uh, one thing that struck me is, you know, the crazy evil mastermind who's crazy and evil because apparently pin tech makes you nuts if you don't have the special helmet. Uh, his tech doesn't work. When he shrinks things, they uh, explode and turn into goo. So he has a gun, and like in one of the early scenes, to prove that he's an evil, an evil psychopath, someone who didn't like his plan, he shoots him with his gun, turns him into a little, a little snot smear on the ground, and flushes him down the toilet. And at that point, I'm looking at this and I'm going, you know, you've kind of hit the Lex Luthor moment of, okay, you didn't develop shrinking technology. You can't make a super soldier who can shrink down to the size of a head of a pin and assassinate someone with impunity. But what you did make is a gun that gets rid of the body. What? Ant-Man. Uh, oh, oh, Ant-Man. oh. So I haven't made shrinking tank work. When I try to shrink something organic, it shrinks into a small pile of goo. And I'm like, there you go. You're done. You're selling <laughs> this stuff to Hydra. Why don't you just stop there? <laughs> what did you give Hydra? Well, I gave Hy- I gave Hydra to Cineblasters. It <laughs> turns people into smears of goo. One hit, armor doesn't matter. You just fire it in the general direction and everything's dead. You don't even have to clean up the body. You just need like a cotton swab. You're only thinking one body. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, take a platoon of those guys but, and then four guys with mops. But imagine but imagine <laughs> if that had been on their like super hydro cannons in space when they were like blasting people. <laughs> like that would have been easy. Yeah, you know, I'm just I just crack up on that that whole kind of like, oh, you've developed freeze technology. What are you gonna do with it? Sell it to the military as a weapon, sell it to the government as weather control, sell it to Frosty Freeze so they can no. make unlimited ice cream. No. I made this technology to rob banks. That's what it's for. I'm gonna rob a bank with my cold gun, with my goo gun, and of course my device that changes the weather. Yeah. Dude, comics are fun, okay? <laughs> I mean, really, that, that's what it comes down to. It's like comics are fun. And remember, in the 1950s, that's when they became for children. Mm-hmm. So kids don't ask these questions. You know what kids do when it comes to that kind of narrative storytelling? What? Axe cop. Yeah, true. You know? True. Which, uh, by the way, if you guys haven't looked at it, it is awesome. <laughs> oh, uh, Stickman inflicted something on me. So it was Saturday, huh? Moment of quiet. So he showed me the original live action Justice League. Oh, you mean the two hours of your life you'll never get back from 1992? Well, I only watched one of them. 
One. It's only a pilot. It was only there two There were two hours. episodes. Oh. I only watched the first episode. And then I had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, because like, he tells me this. I'm like, why haven't I heard of this thing? I'm like, wait, they made a Justice League with Batman? With, you know, and Robin? Like the actual, you know, uh, original 1960s cast? I was like, oh yeah, and all the villains. I'm like, why haven't I heard of this? And then I watched it. And I realized why I hadn't heard of it. It is terrible. Wait, are you talking the Adam West TV show? Yes. Okay, sorry. I, I thought you meant the CBS pilot um, from 1995. No, I'm talking the one from 19, 1968. Okay. It's worse than that. Um, well, no, no. It was it was seventies because I recognized I recognized the Star Wipe mixer they were using to do the text, and it was really bad blue screen technology. Really? Yeah, they had to make Green Lantern kind of aqua because the Green Lantern costume would have been chroma keyed. I'm okay. like, why is the Green Lantern blue? <laughs> oh, and it's like, oh, color correction. Oh, you're talking from the yeah. 1970s, um, yes. um, Shazam and Isis Power Hour. Yes, dude, that was awesome back then. No, it wasn't. You know, it, it really was. It, it was. It was basically. It kind of seemed like their attempt to do a uh, to kind of cross between Laughin and the Munsters. Using I would superhero, challenge using superheroes. I would challenge that. Let's take a look. What? What? What are we looking at? Hey, 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 whoa. That's oh, right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, that wasn't terrible. <laughs> you know. But yeah, I was I just mean, gonna say that 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 whatever we just watched had way more production value than what I saw. <laughs> For starters, it was uh, it, it was it was on beta it was on Betamax, and it obviously had been sitting for about 10, 15 years because just the quality of the print was really poor. Yeah, and sorry about that, guys. I I kind of played a prank on him. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's watch a little bear, but no, no. But seriously, now let's take a look because I liked the Shazam and ISIS Power Hour. This wasn't the Shazam and ISIS Power Hour though. And it was so fucking bad. It was so terrible. And yeah, I mean. Together, yeah, I mean, like, look at this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. It had <laughs> a. It, ha yes. What? Yeah. Like he's actually. Yeah. It had a laugh track. <laughs> I'm like, why does the Legion of Doom have a laugh track? Because um, Giganta is hot. <laughs> I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> and actually, when they do win, Giganta serves drinks. That that she she goes and serves the cocktails like, and I'm like, wow, that is dated. <laughs> and uh, Black Canary's costume, there actually was a costume malfunction in the scene. Mm -hmm. I'm like, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, well, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, and oh, it, yeah. it's just hilarious <laughs> because. They they were actually doing some vaudeville shtick and some I mean it was it was shtick it was bad jokes it was like oh we're gonna I'm gonna give Solomon Grundy a magical hat that will disguise him so that the Justice League will not recognize him as long as he keeps the hat on and then of course he takes the hat off in every scene well yeah because it's Solomon Grundy and he's not very smart but when um all right when, oh and Ross from Night Court stars in it too yes <laughs> yeah um Marsha Warfield is pretty awesome yeah. Um, but it was, it, I could see why it was a pilot. I could see why it didn't fly. I actually thought, like, if they had better writers, they could have accomplished what they were going for, which was a, which was a comedy show. It, it, it was it was supposed to be, like I said, kind of Munsters meets Laugh-In, Beverly Hillbillies kind of like, oh, well, here are these superheroes being silly and fun and, and you know, great race kind of thing. Gotcha. Well, see, when you first said that, I thought you were talking about this. Oh, I, yeah. I thought you were this. talking about the Justice League live action TV pilot for CBS from 1997. Uh, no, that and, actually, um, that, that actually, I, I think they were playing that one straight, right? They weren't, that, that oh, one they, didn't have a laugh track, did it? No, 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 no. Yeah. But it needed one. Yeah. It needed one really badly. Um, I mean, they tried, but this was in the same time period as the original Flash TV show for CBS um, with, you know, John Wesley Shipp. And um, 
Yeah, no, I just... I, yeah. I'm going to say this. Barry Allen has always been a scientist. He's never been a pizza delivery boy, nor has he ever been a bro. Bro. He was both of those in that? Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing I... Well, it's modern. Back then, they didn't care. They were just... They, they, they would modify the script however they wanted. But it just bugs me in the modern era when you have a popular property. Mm -hmm. Be it Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, you know, anything where you've got reams and reams of already written material. And then we hire a director. The first thing he says is, I don't like the source material. Throw <laughs> it out. Superman, I don't want to see him in tights. I never want to see him fly. I want to see him punch a guy in the face and kill him. Uh, you know, we have other superheroes who do all of that. None of them are Superman. Maybe you shouldn't be making the Superman movie, but we got guys you, who you would love. No, nope, it's got to be Superman. Well, you know, it, it, it comes from that whole deconstruction because there's there's one major thing, and it it, it comes down for um, from the fact that we live in the age that the nerds growing up are now the ones in power. Mm-hmm. And good for them. They're making the stuff that they want to see. And good for them. The problem is that they're selling it to kids. You know? Yeah. And when I say that, I don't mean kids shouldn't be watching it. I'm just saying you like it for your reasons, but the kids haven't been alive long enough mm. to understand your reasons. Mm. So give them what they want. Let them have their thing. You can have your thing. Let them have their thing. You know? Um... I've been watching um, a show called The Man in the High Castle, and there are two characters on it, and I'm like, dude, he's got the square chin, he's got the thing. That guy is Superman if he were four inches taller. <laughs> um, and of course, the Dean from the, mm -hmm. um, from the Magicians is in the show, and he's actually my current pick for the Martian Manhunter. I think he would be very good mm. um, in that role. But when it comes down to doing superhero properties, since everyone is so loud about their voice, it's really hard for the people who are unattached or separated, as it were, from um, reality, i.e. corporate executives that are so busy working they don't go to the movies. It's hard to know what the audience wants for them because they can't talk to the audiences. They're always working. So they have to take people's words for it, and everyone speaks loudly yeah. <laughs> these days. So um, it, it's a little weird one. I was trying. I was doing a fantasy casting of um, the Fantastic Four last night mm -hmm. because um, um, in the show The Man in the High Castle, one of my favorite, one of my favorite actors, who is like sixty and doesn't really look it, um, plays essentially the head Nazi in the United States, mm -hmm. and. I forgot about his intensity and his facial shape and all that jazz. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, Disney just got the rights back. I just I'm, I'm kind of thinking that maybe just maybe mm -hmm. I found Dr. Doom. Because this dude is like super intense. I, I first yeah, found dude, dude, dude has to be <laughs> intense. Yeah. Um. You know, he was he was the antagonist in The Mask of Zorro, and he yeah. was literally the best part. But that was 20 years ago. But again, this is what the dude looks like recently. He yeah. don't look any older than Robert Downey Jr. Because he's yeah. not. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I honestly yeah. think that he would. And he's a British actor, which means he's had elocution classes, so he's good with accents. Um, and, yeah, he... The Nazi character that he plays in Man in the High Castle, I'm like, dude, I want to put this guy in a green tunic. Yeah. He just doesn't speak in a third person, but like every time he's on screen, I'm like, you're talking to somebody. You're going to kill them. So I can see him going, and Doom does not appreciate the way that you are trying to get something past him. Oh, one more thing. I found your resistance fighters, and they have been put in the incinerators. Anyway, would you like some tea? Doom likes tea. You know, I mean, that's really where I come from on that one. Um, but, but I don't know. I don't know. So, but I don't know. I, yeah. I, I have, I have, there are certain things about doom that I've always respected. And then I saw the episode where he closed an entire embassy to avoid paying a man $200. <laughs> 
Luke Cage. Yeah. Not a man. Luke Cage. <laughs> Yeah, yeah good. I just keep every time I I, I, I keep flashing back. I just think of like the payback. Like you can just if you just paid the guy, what do you owe him? It's not even like he's blackmailing you. You agreed to this. Well, again, pay the invoice. As go soon, home. And as soon as Luke Cage showed up in Latveria, going knock knock knock. Hey, you owe me two hundred dollars. <laughs> Doom is like, you came all the way out here for two hundred dollars. Doom respects that. Here's your two hundred dollars. Good. <laughs> Close. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, and and I mean that's the whole thing. It's like as soon as you show Doctor Doom that you are a person worthy of respect, he gives it to you. Weird. Yeah. You know, as long as you make clear that you respect Doom more. <laughs> you know, but um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, what do you guys think of you know the mastermind thing, and bringing Doctor Doom? Not necessarily the Fantastic Four, just Doctor Doom into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Let oh, us know that would what be interesting. Yeah, 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 you know. So let yeah, let us know what you guys think about that, and feel free to send your responses to back in the deck at gmail dot com. You can also yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, you can also hit us up over, um, like I said, at back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B A C K I N T H E D E C K at gmail.com. Um, you can also look us up or leave a comment or something on YouTube. Um, just look for Bid P or Back in the Deck on YouTube. Check out the check out our archive there. Um, let us know what you think on Twitter. Check out some of the stuff that we got there. And um, Again, follow us on Twitter at Back in the Deck. Also, join the join the Facebook group, Deckers on the Book. That's right. We are people that are all just like you, and we want to make some more friends. So come on, join us over on Decker on Deckers on the Book. And please let us know if you think we should actually restart the SoundCloud account, because um, that is something that I really want to start doing, and I want to give it to people forever. But if nobody wants it, I don't know why I should make it available. And of course, follow us over. On on Instagram. Now, if you guys want to help us out in a very personal way, then you can um, hit us up over on Patreon by becoming a patron. Um, we've got perks and merchandise and all that stuff. Our tiers start at $1. So for $1, $1 a month, you can um, join us on our polls and in our discussions and look at the entire archive like forever. And, um, you know, a dollar is all you need to come in. If you want to do more, help out more, we've got other tiers all the way up to a hundred bucks. So we're there and we're always there. And of course, you can always do direct um, donations over at GoFundMe at Back in the Deck, or should I say at GoFundMe.com slash BID dash P. So with that, I'm going to say thank you for showing up, my henchman. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. And thank you guys for showing up. And of course, I'm going to say, you know, we're, we're going to be back again. I think our next show is going to be on Friday. And guess what? Super Bowl Sunday. We're doing a nominee live. We're doing a live nominee game. Wait, and you're saying I have a choice if I don't like the sports ball? That's right. If you're not really into the sports ball, then tune in to Back on the Deck or oh. tune in to twitch.tv slash BID underscore P and check out our nominee game. You know, join us in, in the comment section and all that jazz. And I've pumped up the production value. So if you guys want to know where I've been, tune in on Sunday. But with that, I'm going to say if anybody tells you that you can't have the hobbies you like because of the circumstance of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender, identity, sexual preference, your disability, or your budget, you can tell those people that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying see you guys next time on Buster Recap. Night, everybody.